Welcome to Zcast, everyone. I'm Zs Caravalo from ZK Research, and I'm here inside the Veeam stand at AW in the Expo Hall at AWS reInvent 2023 in Las Vegas. And I'm here with Michael Cade, uh, field CTO for Veeam. Why don't you say hi and uh, tell us what you do? Hey, um, yeah. So I report into our CTO, but uh, my focus is all cloud native, cloud. I, I like to say the cool technology, but it's the cloud technologies yeah. really. Yeah. So, so as I mentioned, we are here at reInvent uh, 23. Uh, boy, it's packed here, huh? Yeah, I, so many people. Yeah, yeah so, so many. I think all sixty-five thousand people were in the hallway when I was trying to come here. So, <laughs> you know, so what are you, what are your thoughts on the show? What do you think of the keynotes? Yeah. So I think there's a trend, right? All the all the all the events that we've been to over the over the last like six months, nine months has always had an AI. Yeah. AI vendors, AI talk track has been there, and I think that that kind of translates into our conversations is maybe not from an AI perspective, but it's definitely data driven. People are pushing more workloads into the public cloud, things like different database services, right? Whether it's cloud native databases or RDS or DynamoDB, those sorts of uh, functional databases in the cloud are, are definitely being talked about a lot, I've, I'm finding. Yeah, it's interesting with, uh, there's, there's so much focus here on AI. And I didn't. I thought one of the things that was missing a little bit was the talk, was the talk about the data itself. Because uh, if, you know, AI is the new, it's the engine that's going to make companies go. Well, data is the fuel. Yeah. And you know, I know AWS has their zero ETL vision, and so we're not really there yet. But uh, what are customers telling you about AI and some of the challenges? Around? So I think we're still very early for the majority of like the, the the customers on the on the show floor. I think they're interested in it. I think we're seeing some like vendors popping up that are really interesting. For me personally, like speaking about vector databases, like where we store where we store the model, right? Where we store the data, and then how do we protect that? Like, that's a that's a real real question that is being asked by the by the vendors, like by, by the vector database vendors are asking, how do you, how do we protect this stuff when bad things happen? Yeah, and uh, and, and uh, so back to the data discussion. How are they handling? What do you see customers doing to try and? bring all that data together. So I think there's a, there's a migration theme, right? Like for traditional sitting on premises, database servers, we ten, five, 10 years ago, maybe even even more recent, we would have a, a big SQL server and we'd put all of our databases on that from an or, or an Oracle server, we'd have all of that on one. Now with Cloud Native, we have so much choice and we can pick the right database for the right job. Um, I but think that's really so much more data in more places. It, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And being able to, like, I don't just want to use a SQL database for everything. I can use NoSQL, I can use Vector, I can use graph databases. So I think customers are starting to understand and actually take advantage of these micro data services, if you will, like how, how they can pick the right tool for the right job. And then the shift to cloud native, since you're the cloud native person, uh, how's that changed the way IT is managed? Yeah, I think I think uh, there's a misconception still around Kubernetes being a stateless platform, and and some people are religious about that, right? They they're very much they they don't they will not store any data inside the Kubernetes cluster. But what we're having are, are conversations here around people are using RDS, but their application lives in Kubernetes. Is still part of that whole application, that RDS piece, right? How do we protect all of that? And we have the ability to do that. I did a session earlier at the booth where we talked about how, do, how can I help you get from a virtual machine, Postgres database, into either a staple set or into RDS. Like that migration is is a is a concern and a, a topic that people are asking about. All right, so let's uh, shift gears a little bit to some AWS things since we're here yeah. at reInvent. I noticed uh, around the booth you've got uh, AWS Backup and hybrid cloud things. So with, I'm curious about AWS Backup. One of the things I hear from customers all the time is they assume if they put it in the cloud, it's safe and it's it's going to be backed up. But that's not the case, right? No, no. So so. AWS do a fantastic job of obviously keeping the lights on, keeping the infrastructure, keeping yeah. the service available. But you can clearly see on their on their site they talk about the the shared responsibility model. They talk about the data is your responsibility. So if you mess up that database, yeah. which is generally what I see, I see people um, like doing making accident. They it's more accident prone. It's very easy to drop a database. Yes, but obviously the topical story at the moment is around cyber 
threats, ransomware, and all of that stuff, which is equally a failure scenario. So that's where that's where we're we're having that conversation around protecting the workload. So yeah, exactly that is the shared responsibility is your data. You're yeah. responsible for it. Amazon will keep keep the service up and running, but if you mess your data up or someone else messes it up, then that's on you, right? So that's a, a good point to understand. Just because you're in the cloud, the the responsibility to back it up is still on the customer. Uh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. And so what else are you talking about here at the booth? So a couple of new features that are coming for us. So obviously there's a load of services from AWS. One is DynamoDB. So I'm seeing a lot of conversations around serverless functions, Lambda functions or step functions writing into a DynamoDB, so scraping something and storing that data in a, a DynamoDB uh, instance. So with Veeam Backup for AWS, we're bringing out the ability to protect that. We've also got the ability with R RDS to offload that to S3. We already have the ability to protect RDS, so but actually push that off to a cheaper, deeper storage in object yeah. storage. And then finally, another thing we're seeing object storage as a first class citizen in terms of I want to run my production workloads, Finally. my content yeah, delivery yeah. network. I mean, Veeam do it. We store all of our assets, our, our white papers, our videos. They all get stored in an S3 bucket. So we need to protect that, right? People need to protect that mission critical data. And that's what we're bringing as well into the into the platform over the next, before the end of the year, hopefully. All right. And I see you got the Caston logo on there. Want to talk a little bit about that product? Yeah, so so specifically, we, we announced and released 6.5. So 6.5, it was KubeCon two weeks ago. So what the key areas that we, we spoke about here yes, uh, earlier on today in our session was seam integration into Datadog. Um, so being able to see when something bad's potentially happening, um, the ability to import that RDS that I mentioned around and orchestrate that so it's not as uh, manual because no one wants to be doing that manual migration of databases from, yeah. from A to B. And then finally around multi-cluster, we're seeing, we're seeing some customers having 10 plus clusters. So we need to be able to manage that from a multi-cluster point of view. K10 gets deployed inside the cluster. So if you've got 10 plus clusters, you've got 10 plus Kasten. So we have multi-cluster dashboard that allows us to, to integrate and, and see everything as a global view. So there's a few things that we that we did there, but we support Red Hat OpenShift on AWS yeah, well as well as EKS as well. So okay. we're, we're seeing a lot of customers on to at least talking about moving into EKS and EKS anywhere. Uh, so just one last question, Michael. Wait. Obviously, generative AI, it's different than AI, but uh, that's where a lot of the media, the interest is from customers in media. Um, how are, How is Veeam thinking of using generative AI in its products? So I think it's very early about how, how we could develop and we're definitely researching how we could put that data to work probably actually more on the ml side is how we could put that data to work but in the next version of veeam back and replication we've got the the chatbot that will look at all of our documentation so that in a natural language type way we can ask it questions about what what do you support how does it how does this work how do i configure it so i guess the first step in terms of how we're going to add uh, ai type Type tools into our product is that's the first iteration. But that, but the real, the magic there, I guess, is the natural language part. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly that. Because now instead of having your engineer use the product, you could have, potentially have a line of business manager, maybe just thinking about some stuff. Yeah. You, you're right. Being able to go query the data itself. Yeah. Exactly yeah. that. If you think about like we've got document, we've got pages and pages of documentation to be able to take away the ability or. The, the, the hassle of having to go and search that documentation, find what you're looking for, you can now just simply ask it, like how do I yeah. how do I configure S3 backup? And yeah. it will give you that then pointers. You know, that's fascinating to think about how this changes the world of IT because it democratizes a lot of things that you had to be very technical to do. Yeah. Right? And now you don't have to be so technical. And, uh, yeah, I would look, like, so just sit pie in the sky like type thinking, how could we put that backup data to work to start building those embeddings and understand yeah. what that data is like put that data to work leverage that data i think there's a there's a very interesting time at the moment in yeah. in the whole tech world okay. i think well i'm looking forward to seeing that perhaps uh next reinvent we'll be able to talk about that yeah yeah so. exactly that all right michael anything else you want to add no all good okay. yeah thanks for having me well, well thanks for uh thanks for taking the time with me awesome so i'm behalf of michael kadem zsk of al from zk reach and thank you for watching uh, please hit the subscribe button and I'll see you next time on another Zcast.